WFCA's Faith in Sports. I'm Chris Schneider. Welcome to the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports. Brought to you by the DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon. It's going to be May 12th at the Fort Worth Club featuring Gene Stallings, Grant Taff, and Gary Patterson. Our special guest on the show today is the former head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. He's the coach that got the Shaq and Kobe era in L.A. started, Del Harris. Twelve games into that lockout season, Robert Ory had a heart murmur, couldn't start the season. Rick Fox sprained his ankle. Shaq O'Neal came in not quite in shape after not having played since May, and we didn't start the lockout till right at February. And we go six and six, and I'm fired. And Phil Jackson, the next year came in who is a zen buddhist guy and and he got the platform for the championship of my team more from a wonderful friend of dfwfca del harris in just a few minutes our dfwfca 50th anniversary classic moment this week comes from one of the greatest college football quarterbacks of all time a man known all over the world for his christian faith Tim Tebow. You don't have to be influenced by your surroundings, but you can influence your surroundings with the help of Jesus because none of us are strong enough uh, when all the temptation are around us. But with his help, we can have that strength to influence people and not be influenced. And I think that is just an extremely powerful thing. More from Tim Tebow coming up in the classic moment later in this half hour. Also joining us on the show today is one of our teammates at DFWFCA, James Euler. He is the international missionary director for FCA in the countries of Colombia and Venezuela. You know, from a personal testimony standpoint, I was reading my sports page before I was reading the Bible. But um, uh, what happened is, is that that uh, I got challenged by my pastor to, you know, become a, a uh, become a missionary to look at opportunities to serve overseas. And I had opportunities to go to Spain. I had opportunities to go to Ireland, and I had opportunities to go to a lot of different countries. But when I met with um, the director for El Camino Academy in Bogota, Colombia, uh, my heart was moved, and I felt like 110 percent, you know, the peace of God that I was going to go there and serve. Ironically, when I was there, I ended up meeting some people who had backgrounds with FCA. And that was a great thing. More from DFWFCA's James Euler, international missionary in Colombia and Venezuela for FCA. Heads up, coaches. FCA has something special coming up just for you. It's the Coaches Enrichment Camp. It's going to be July 7th through the 10th at La Toretta Lake Resort and Spa. It's open to all Texas coaches, married or single. That's you, and we would love to have you come join us. Go to our website, dfwfca.org. To get all the information. Our special guest today is pretty distinctive, both for his full head of silver hair and his coaching career in the NBA. Dell Harris started the Shaquille O'Neal Kobe Bryant era when he was coaching the Lakers. He was also the head coach of the Rockets and Bucks. He was an assistant with the Mavericks and now helps run the Mavericks minor league franchise, the Texas Legends. Dell's coaching career started pretty humbly as a junior high coach in a little town in Tennessee. Hey, Dell, thank you so much for joining us here on the show today. So how in the world did you go from a junior high coach in a tiny Tennessee town to one of the winningest coaches in NBA history? Well, God works in strange ways, as we all know. I will tell you that as young guys come to me and ask, you know, what can I do? You know, I'd sure like to move up and either be in college coaching or the NBA or do the kind of things you do. What what do you recommend? Well, I don't recommend starting out in junior high, I can tell you that. (laughs) (laughs) How in the world do you uh, advance from junior high into the NBA? It's really just you know, not for us to question or even figure out. That's the plan. Apparently, I was going to be a pastor. And when I graduated with a degree in religion, I was ready to go to a seminar. And I got a call two weeks before school was to begin at the seminar from my major professor in college. And he said, you know, uh, to make some money before you go on to graduate school, maybe you ought to work a year. And if you agree, I've got a job for you coaching basketball here at, at uh, school 
so elementary school, seventh, eighth grade at that time was elementary still, and uh, so, you know, and you can be the coach and uh, do that uh, this year, and then start up next year. And I would have done probably what anything that Dr. Crouch uh, recommended, and I'd been his associate pastor as a student for two years, and uh, so I did that, and we. We had this unbelievable season with these kids in a remote area of Tennessee. And um, we scored over 100 points four times, for example, in six-minute quarters. And it got all kinds of publicity around there. And I had been a small college uh, All-American honorable mention as a player. And I got thinking, well, maybe this is what, uh, you know, I'm, I'm called to do. But I decided I would try to do both, which I did, but if I were going to coach, I was going to do it in Indiana, where I was from, and where they were really doing basketball in the 50s, uh, not in Tennessee, so I went back, and I went to graduate school in order to become uh, a, a teacher, educator. I hadn't taken any of those kinds of courses, and, and uh, got my master's degree, and began uh, coaching at a small high school as head coach uh, then the next year, and uh, then that was a really small school. We had 19 seniors, for example. And then the, I moved up to a bigger school that had about 30 or 40 seniors. And then we won a lot of games in a couple of years. And then and I went up to the next school that was a little bit bigger yet. And we won even more games. And at that point, a small college opened up uh, for a uh, head coach and uh, there in Indiana, Earlham College, and I sent my letter in, and uh, just, you know, not knowing that had, there was no way to get a job by sending a letter in if you'd been coaching high school for <laughs> four or five years, so, but anyway, as it turned out, long story, uh, there was a hundred and some odd applicants, uh, but they got me because they needed a combination baseball and basketball coach and I had coached them both and had won conference championships and so forth at at both levels and um, so I began coaching baseball and basketball there at Earlham College did that for nine years and in the summers I, when I started writing articles on on coaching and and, uh, and I ended up writing a couple books on coaching and I got known around the world actually because at that time people around the world were reading whatever uh, they could get hold of to learn how to coach and I got a call from Puerto Rico where they were playing professional basketball in the summer and it turned out that the coaches there each summer were ABA, NBA or D1 coaches for the most part and they wanted me to come down and coach so I hadn't even heard of basketball down there but I went down there, and for the next seven summers, I coached there, and we won four divisions and three national championships, and one of the ABA coaches said, you know, you ought to come be my assistant coach at the Utah Stars, 1975. I did that the last year of the ABA. The next year, he was head coach of the Houston Rockets in the NBA, and he says, you ought to come down here with me now, and that's so all I did in 1976, and we went to the Final Four that year and he got coach of the year, and I've been working at some level or another uh, in the NBA as assistant coach, head coach, GM, consultant, uh, whatever, ever since. We will have more with Dell Harris coming up in just a couple of minutes, and later in the show, we will get our 50th anniversary classic moment from Tim Tebow, and we would love to connect with you. Pretty easy, actually. All you have to do is find us on Facebook at DFWFCA and on Twitter at FCA DFW. This is the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports, brought to you by the DFW FCA Business Community Luncheon, May 12th at the Fort Worth Club. Did you know that after a trip to an FCA sports camp in Estes Park, Colorado in 1962, Dallas Cowboys coach Tom Landry felt inspired to use his position as a coach to influence young student athletes. So in 1966, 50 years ago, Coach Landry helped launch the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Dallas. Hi, I'm Rick Bowles, North Texas Director for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and I'd like to ask you to tell us your FCA story. What impact did FCA have or is currently having on your life? Visit dfwfca.org for more information. 
information. The DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes Business Community Luncheon is May 12th at the Fort Worth Club. Baylor Hall of Fame coach Grant Taft will be holding court with Alabama legend Gene Stallings and TCU's Gary Patterson. I'll uh, interview those two great coaches. I'm sure there will be no yarns told that day. (laughs) We'll see. (laughs) It'll be legendary. The DFW FCA Business Community Luncheon, May 12th, with Stallings, Patterson, and Taft. Go to dfwfca.org for all the info. Look forward to seeing you. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. Chris Schneider, welcome back to DFWFCA's Faith in Sports, brought to you by the DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon at the Fort Worth Club May 12th. We'll continue our conversation with former Lakers head coach and Maverick assistant coach Del Harris in just a moment. Tim Tebow will provide us with the DFWFCA 50th anniversary classic moment, and we will also hear from DFWFCA's international missionary to Colombia and Venezuela, James Euler. We'll see what FCA is doing in South America these days. The DFW FCA Sports Leadership Camp is coming up. It's going to be at DBU. It's June 28th through July 1st, and this is for high school students. Go to dfwfca.org and get all the information on that and how you can get all the latest info delivered straight to your email. Let's continue the conversation we're having with uh, a great friend of DFWFCA, Del Harris, former head coach of the Lakers and Rockets and Bucks. He also worked with Don Nelson and Mark Cuban with the Mavericks and now helps run the Mavs minor league franchise, the Texas Legends. Coach Harris, thank you so much for sticking around with us. Now, you told us a few minutes ago how the Lord took your career from a uh, little junior high school in Tennessee to the NBA. Tell us about your faith now. How did you come to be such a strong believer in Jesus Christ? Over the years, uh, I've had my ups and downs, uh, to be uh, quite honest about uh, my relationship. Uh, so I'm one who... Uh, believes in the second and chances and beyond uh, due to grace and uh, there were times in my life that we want to edit out Uh, but uh, ironically enough uh, in 1998 I was coaching the Lakers and uh, my uh, both my parents died within five weeks of one another they were they were 88 years old and it was not unexpected but nonetheless uh, as a result of a whole lot of things that I experienced at that time in uh, going through their their funerals and the, the people that they had touched over the years uh, it changed my my whole perspective and life around and I uh, I had never left the Lord by any means but uh, nonetheless I still would say I came back I was recommitted to doing what uh, I could do uh, for the kingdom. And ironically, I here I was, I was coaching the Lakers, and we had just won 61 games and gone to the Final Four, and uh, uh, I'd been coach of the year already and was the 17th winningest coach in the history of the NBA. And I thought, boy, this is just what God has planned out all along. I'm going to be the coach of the Lakers. I'm going to be this, uh, have the great pat- platform and witness. And But the lockout came. Well, that helped me to get back into studying and preparing, and the pastor there at uh, Palisades Christian Church got me involved in teaching and so forth. And um, But I needed that, and lo and behold, 12 games into that lockout season, Robert Ory had a heart murmur, couldn't start the season. Rick Fox sprained his ankle. Shaq O'Neal came in not quite in shape after not having played since May, and we didn't start the lockout till right at February. And we go six and six, and I'm fired. And Phil Jackson, the next year, came in, 
who is a Zen Buddhist guy, and and he got the platform for the championship of my team. That was, you know, I had the youngest team in the playoffs. I didn't when I my last year, full year, I didn't have a player on my team thirty years old. I mean, we were all set. And he gets all these championships as the Zen Buddhist guy. And I come to Dallas. Uh, but Dallas has been a wonderful place for me because uh, uh, North Texas is a wonderful Christian area. There's a lot of kingdom work going on here. And it has been a good place uh, for me to continue to grow and develop. Well, we are sure honored and blessed to have you here, that's for sure. That is Del Harris. Thank you, sir. And we look forward to having you on the show again soon. Coming up next, we're going to hear from a member of the DFWFCA team, James Euler, an international missionary in Colombia and Venezuela. And if you think that's interesting, you're absolutely right. We'll also get our DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic Moment from Tim Tebow. Join us for FCA Night at the Ballpark. Do you like some baseball? Here's your chance to have a great time and have some great fellowship, too. It's Saturday, May 21st at Dr. Pepper Stadium, and all-you-can-eat tickets are just $25. Now, you can get all the details on this amazing night at the ballpark at our website, dfwfca.org. This is the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports, sponsored by the DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon, May 12th at the Fort Worth Club. Situated on 330 acres of beautiful natural landscape with facilities to accommodate groups up to 1,000, Lakeview Camp and Retreat Center is the ideal place to schedule your next event. Whatever your group's goals are, Lakeview aims to meet your needs, providing year-round service facilities for retreats, conferences, camps, corporate meetings, outdoor education outings, school events, and family gatherings. Our friendly staff is committed to making your stay a great experience. Come to Lakeview Camp and Retreat Center and enjoy state-of-the-art facilities, activities that engage and rejuvenate, comfortable lodging, and great food in a setting that inspires the awe of the greatness of God. To learn more about this scenic location for your next event, visit us online today. For more information, visit lakeviewcamp.net. Her goal? To shoot par. Our goal? To keep her on course. While she prepares for her shot, we prepare her for life. By helping her pursue honorable ambitions, she will stay on course. Join the Fellowship of Christian Athletes as we strive to put the heart and soul in sports by impacting the world for Jesus Christ. To learn more, contact us at fca.org. That's fca.org. Heads up, all coaches. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes has something special coming up just for you. FCA knows better than anyone how hard you work. We know coaches need to be able to get away and be refreshed and inspired. The FCA Coaches Enrichment Camp 2016 will be July 7th through the 10th at an amazing lake resort and spa. It's open to all Texas coaches, married or single. Many of the greatest coaches of all time have taken advantage of FCA Coaches Camps to be refreshed and renewed. Guys like Lou Holtz, Bobby Bowden, Tom Osborne, Gene Stalling, Grant Tapp and John Wooden, just to name a few. If it was good for them, it'll be good for you, too. Go to dfwfca.org for all the details. We hope to see you there, Coach. I'm Chris Schneider. Welcome back to DFWFCA's Faith in Sports, brought to you by the upcoming DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon. It's going to be at the prestigious Fort Worth Club May the 12th, going to be a lot of fun. We will have our DFWFCA 50th anniversary classic moment coming up here in just a couple of minutes with Tim Tebow. Now, if the Lord is leading you to be a part of the DFWFCA team with us, we would love to have you help us spread the news of Jesus Christ. Really doesn't matter whether you're a parent, a business leader, a church leader, a school administrator, a coach, a teacher, anyone who might be interested in making a difference in your community, FCA offers a whole lot of opportunities to serve. Just go to our website, dfwfca.org, and get all the details. 
All right, now joining us here on Faith in Sports now is a member of the DFW FCA team. His name is James Euler. And uh, James, I don't hear any accent in your voice when when we sit down and talk, but you are actually an international missionary serving in South America, in uh, Colombia and Venezuela, right? That is 100% correct, without a doubt. And if you would like an accent, yo puedo hablar en español. See, there you go. I knew it was in there somewhere, right? <laughs> so tell us where you serve. Where Where is your mission field? Well, our mission field is both the countries of Colombia and Venezuela. Currently, we are in 10, uh, 10 cities that have a population of 1 million or more. Our strongest ministry is going to be in the city of Bogota, uh, well, Bogota, uh, Barranquilla, uh, also in Cucuta, Caracas, and Maracaibo in Venezuela. And uh, we also have a very strong ministry in Cali, Colombia. A lot of people don't know that FCA is uh, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes isn't just within the borders of the United States. It goes around the world. Uh, This is true. Uh, Actually, you know, this is no pat on my back. This is all a God thing. It actually started with me Uh, in 2004. I was uh, actually serving. I used to work for Dallas-based Club Corp. And um, uh, I got transferred up to Chicago, Illinois, a block and a half away from Moody Bible Institute. And uh, lo and behold, and, and without a doubt, I, you know, f- you know, from a personal testimony standpoint, I was reading my sports page before I was reading the Bible. But um, uh, what happened is, is that that uh, I got challenged by my pastor to, you know, become a a uh, become a missionary to look at opportunities to serve overseas. And I had opportunities to go to Spain, I had opportunities to go to Ireland, and I had opportunities to go to a lot of different countries. But when I met with um, the director for El Camino Academy in Bogota, Colombia, uh, my heart was moved. And I felt like 110%, you know, the peace of God that I was going to go there and serve. Ironically, when I was there, I ended up meeting some people who had backgrounds with FCA. And that was a great thing. Uh, I had a gentleman there by the name of Andrew who came to Christ through FCA at Tennessee Tech. He was there, and another person that came to Christ through FCA up in, near Chicago, Illinois, outside of Naperville. And uh, so we were having a conversation one day, you know, in a coaches meeting there at El Camino, and we were talking about, hey, I wonder what Fellowship of Christian Athletes is doing here locally in the country of Columbia. And um, so, you know, I, you know, got on a you know, you know, dialed over the fax machine there at El Camino Academy, and I got a hold of Dan Britton, who's now our international director, and I said, hey, there's a bunch of us that would like to volunteer, because I used to volunteer for FCA, and I said, where are you guys, what are you guys doing here in, in the country of Columbia? We'd like to volunteer, and Dan just said, you know, every now and then a missions group, like a FCA and a local church, will go and do a mission trip and do a sports club, or sports camp, excuse me, um, but we don't have anything permanent. And I just simply asked, would you like to? That was in February of 2004. And then in August of 2000, actually it was August 16th, 2005, officially we became the very first ever international branch of FCA. And now we are in 56 countries. How do they get uh, in contact with you? How do they give to you or volunteer? Certainly we do have a website. It's C-O-L-V-E-N for Colombia, Venezuela. C-O-L-V-E-N-F-C-A dot org. Simple as that. Simple as that. My contact information is on there, phone number, email address, all that. That is DFWFCA team member, international missionary James Euler. Thank you so much, James, and thank you for your amazing ministry in South America. It's now time for the DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic Moment. I know you've been waiting for it because it's provided this week by one of the most well-known Christians, not just in the United States, but in the world today. He never shied away from his faith when he was winning national championships at the University of Florida or when he was playing in the NFL. Tim Tebow tells us why the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been such a big part of his life over the years. A lot of different um, places uh, growing up and giving me sort of a platform and an opportunity to say, hey guys, come on, let's go to this, or let's let's do this for FCA. And people are more inclined to want to come because it's FCA, okay, uh, athletes are going to be there, it'll be cool. So it's really given me 
an opportunity to, to influence a lot of guys and bring a lot of guys on because it was it was under FCA, and I'm really thankful for that. And still to this day, guys might not come to church with me, but they can come to FCA, so it's great. You don't have to be influenced by your surroundings, but you can influence your surroundings with the help of Jesus because none of us are strong enough uh, when all the temptation are around us. But with his help, we can have that strength to influence people and not be influenced. And I think that is just an extremely powerful thing. That is the great Tim Tebow with this week's DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic Moment. Thank you, Tim. We appreciate it very much. DFWFCA is celebrating 50 years of ministry, and we're asking you to help us commemorate this milestone. Actually, it's a lot of fun. We just want you to share your FCA story with us. And in return, we'll give you a special FCA scripture coin, and you'll be entered into a monthly drawing to receive some DFW FCA 50th anniversary gear, like hats and t-shirts, wonderful stuff, uh, golf shirts. Just go to dfwfca.org and get all the information. Coming up next, I'll tell you who the special guest is going to be joining us here on the show next week. We'll also tell you who will provide next week's DFW FCA 50th anniversary class moment. This is DFWFCA's Faith in Sports, brought to you by the DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon at the Fort Worth Club May 12th, featuring Grant Taft, Gary Patterson, and Gene Stallings. In 1966, Coach Tom Landry had the inspiration to start the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Dallas. This year, Dallas-Fort Worth FCA is celebrating God's amazing impact on coaches and athletes during our 50th anniversary. Over 16,000 students and athletes are involved with FCA in North Texas. Nearly 500 coaches and teachers volunteer their time to influence student athletes. Visit dfwfca.org for more information, including how you can pick up some one-of-a-kind 50th anniversary products like caps, shirts, coffee mugs, and more. Earlier this year, nearly 100 middle school student athletes gave their life to Christ at DFW FCA's Weekend of Champions Camp. Next up is the annual Sports Leadership Camp for high school students at DBU from June 28th through July 1st. We are looking for student athletes who want to grow in their faith and their sport. The objective of the Sports Leadership Camp is to help develop students to rise up as athletes and leaders in a Christ-centered atmosphere. Attendees will be challenged and inspired to become leaders on their teams and on their school campuses. Space is limited, so sign up today. Get all the info at dfwfca.org. I'm Chris Schneider. Thank you for joining us for DFWFCA's Faith in Sports Radio Show, sponsored by the upcoming DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon. It's going to be at the Fort Worth Club May the 12th, featuring some college football greatness. Legends Grant Taff and Gene Stallings, joined by current TCU head coach Gary Patterson. Our thanks to our special guest today, Dell Harris and Tim Tebow. We would love to connect with you, and it's pretty easy to find us. Find us on Facebook at DFWFCA and on Twitter at FCA DFW. I'm Chris Schneider, the sports and spirit speaker. You can find me at RadioactiveSpeaking.com. Godly messages with stories from the greatest coaches and athletes of all time. Find me, the Sports and Spirit Speaker, at RadioactiveSpeaking.com. Now, as the Stanley Cup playoffs progress, we will talk a little hockey again next week. We'll be joined by former Dallas Stars goalie Dan Ellis. He is now a member of the Washington Capitals. Former Nebraska quarterback Scott Frost, now the head coach at Central Florida, will provide the classic moment for us next week. Guests scheduled to join us in future weeks include Lou Holtz, Tom Osborne, Roger Staubach, Dan Reeves, Danny Werfel, Mike Singletary, Tony Dungy, Andy Pettit, Ben Zobrist, Adrian Gonzalez, and many others. FCA's Faith in Sports is an outreach of DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Hosted and produced by me, Chris Schneider. Executive producer is Rick Bowles. For information on DFW FCA, contact Rick at rbowles, B-O-W-L-E-S, rbowles at fca.org. And remember this week to do all that you do unto the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. From the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Faith in Sports.